It's a winning Friday on BYU Sports Nation, and you just saw BYU women's basketball highlights from their 18-point win over Pacific last night, led by an incredible performance from Lauren Gustin. 21 points, 22 rebounds. I mean, just wild numbers for Lauren Gustin to help us discuss how that is capable of happening and why it's not an irregular thing is BYU women's basketball assistant coach Lee Kamard. Let, let's start with Lauren Gustin because we've seen her go 20-20 before. To do it again is something else. And I don't think it'll be the last time she does it either, Lee. Absolutely not. She'll have <laughs> a couple more of those this season, in my opinion. Wow. Okay, 21 and 22. How aware are you of her getting close to that type of game statistically? Well, we get report stats every media timeout, every timeout, and we're following it. You know, it's not super important, but we're thrilled when she has games like that. Her development uh, down low in the basket, and you spent a lot of time in your career down around the basket, and of course you went out there and shot too, but, but as you, as from understanding your game and, and coaching her to get better at her game, what do you work on? The best thing that she does, she just has a motor that's unlike anybody else, okay? And now it's just adding the basketball side of things to that. She works with Morgan every day, some finishes around the rim, and very comfortable now shooting that 15 to 17 foot jumper to where they have to guard and she can use her athleticism to get around some of the slower footed uh, post players on opposing teams. But just that experience of getting the ball down there She's drawn a lot of attention in the last few games, but uh, just managing it and being successful. You obviously had a fantastic mid-range game. So how much are you involved in helping a player like Lauren Gustin de- like evolve and, and develop sure. that? Sure. I think at least this year I'm more with her mentally, just talking through the game. Morgan's spending a lot of time hands-on with her. Last few years, though, we spent a lot of time in the gym specifically working on that 15, 17 foot jump shot, obviously down in the post as well, which is her bread and butter, but more just talking the game, learning the game mentally and, and seeing it like, hey, what are they doing? How are they playing you? How are they guarding you and defending the ball screen action? And what's my read out of that? So that's what it is. It's amazing how much freedom you got in your game when your point guard was in double figures and had seven or eight assists. Uh, and, and now transfer over to the to the women's game, even last night with, with Falatea with 14 points and seven assists. What does that do for Gustin when when the point guard is contributing? In yeah, game? I mean, you're seeing it at all levels of the, of, the, of the game of basketball, right? You spread the floor out. You got a couple playmakers. You got somebody that can score inside, which is Lauren, right? And then you play that two-man game. And just understanding, hey, how's the defense trying to defend us? How are we trying to attack that? And what are the reads out of that? Are they coming from the weak side? Are they doubling down on Lauren? What's her read? You know, just kind of that, understanding that. And for Nani, game reps, you can't replicate it. You can practice it, but a game situation for her getting downhill, then she has dumps to Lauren, opens it up more for Lauren because they're keyed on uh, for Nani. And it's just kind of a, how are you attacking us? We're going to come back this way, you know. So. Lee Kamard is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You're in a unique position because you go from the Judkins staff and with just an historic season a year ago, yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. It, it was so fun to watch that team excel and get a six seed in the NCAA tournament and win the WCC regular season championship going away, it felt like. And now you're part of the new staff and there have been some understandable struggles and you've seen attrition and star players leave. What's been the best part of uh, about all of this process for you going from one staff to the next and the hardest part? I think both are the same for me because it's a whole new experience. I've never been a part of something as challenging, right? Last year we were spoiled. We had all these seniors. We had Shaylee, and we could have walked into a lot of the WCC games and won regardless of our game plan and, and the preparation into that. Now the margin of error is a lot smaller. And it's not because we're not as talented. We just don't have the experience that we've had coming together as a staff, right? Growing together as a staff, but growing these girls' games and the experience that they get in a game, it's really fun. It's challenging, a lot more challenging. It has its, uh, some days it's not as fun, right? Like, (laughs) but some, just that growth that's happening for them seeing it, but also for us, me as an individual, the staff as well, figuring out, hey, your strength, my strength, how does this all fit, as well as the players. 
it's fun. You're also at the epicenter of where the transfer portal is is rocking college basketball. And so you're on a staff that has to go recruit and re-recruit the current players that you have. So it's not all about now going and finding, it's about going and finding and trying to keep. But as you move forward, uh, with the addition of, a, of, a, of another big name four-star player that's coming and this last recruiting class, which might push you up to the top 20 for your first recruiting class with this new staff, um, that's pretty optimistic. Sure. We, we like the girls that are here. Obviously, you're always trying to improve yeah. and get better. There's a great class coming in, right? Starts with Coach's daughter. And good players want to play with other good players. And so it just kind of snowballs from there. With the current players, getting that experience that they waited patiently to get, throw in a couple four stars like you're talking about, things get exciting pretty quick. We're trying to think. Uh, Two players and eight stars. It's been a while since that's, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. happened. For sure. It's exciting, for sure. We've seen some big players. I mean, yeah. Lexi Eaton and Shaylee Gonzalez, two of the all-timers, BOA women's basketball. How much do you utilize what they've done and what those players' names have accomplished at BOA women's basketball when you are recruiting potential stars that you see big things for at BYU? Sure. You just, you just focus on the trajectory or the track record of the program of BYU women's basketball, right? Girls that are coming here know I can come here. I can get on all the watch lists. I can be up for the Becky Hammond Award, you know, come in and produce. We've been ranked, you know, basically the last 20 years with Judkins, and that's what's going to proceed to happen as we go forward. And then the track record's there. You come here, play at a high level, first-class facilities, first-class resources, and, and administrations on board supporting it. It's a good thing. Now everyone knows you were a big star on the men's team. <laughs> 2008 most valuable player in the Mountain West <laughs> Conference. Uh, is there a difference with how you were coached and the way you coach? I tried to be what I liked from the coaches that I had, right? Taking a little from each, right? From Coach Rice, from Dave Rose, from Coach Judkins, from some of the pro coaches that I had overseas and blend all of that in and relay that to the athletes that I'm working with on a day-to-day -day basis, right? What did I like? How did I like to be talked to, right? The wording that I liked. <laughs> How I did not like the to be The tone talked. that I appreciated, you yeah. know, and, and bundle all that up and have as much of an impact with them. I think I try to focus on probably just thinking the game more than just the physical side of it, right? Especially with the younger girls, or women that haven't played as much. Yeah. Right? Hey, let's understand what's going on so that you can excel, right? So I can't think of a more difficult way to start conference play than what <laughs> BYU women's sure. basketball faced. I mean, you played Gonzaga. You yeah. just picked to win the league. You played them tough. A close game. You end up losing by nine. That's a Saturday. Then you don't practice on Sunday. Yeah. You're in the Pacific Northwest on the road, and you have to play Portland on Monday night, who's the other team that's maybe going to win this conference that most people think. Okay, so you come back, you get Pacific and St. Mary's. To get to 2-2, two and two, what would that mean given the difficult start, and, and how do you get that done against St. Mary's? Yeah, there's going to – I mean, there's not going to be a lot of teams that go on that Pacific Northwest swing and win a lot of games, okay? Battled Gonzaga tough. Quick turnaround Monday games for any sports team at BYU are the worst. Brutal. Ex experienced it on the men's side. Practices are worse because – it's Sunday before, and we don't do a whole lot. So that game wasn't our best game of the year by far. Um, coming back, get back on track with a Monmouth win before the break. Really happy with how they came back after Christmas, right? You could tell most of the girls had done something physically, so there wasn't a, a lead up into the game. Super happy with last night's performance, aside from the turnovers. Great, great attention to detail and focus from the girls. Got another big one Saturday. They played a tough one against San Diego, lost in overtime. We're up big early. Uh, got our work cut out for us. They play a style of play that, you know, is hard for us. Uh, play a lot of guards at times. So the kind of the, the matchup of, hey, do we play big? Do we play small? And how that affects, you know, the flow of the game. It's going to be a good one, though. BYU and St. Mary's typically a very physical, physical game. Absolutely. 
Looking forward to it, uh, New Year's Eve. Before the ball drops in New York, right. the ball must be tipped yeah. off in Provo. Right? <laughs> it must be tipped Goes up, go. must come down. Okay, Let's Lee, go. great to talk with you, man. Happy New Year to you, and Same. good luck tomorrow Same. against St. Mary's. Thanks, guys.